is hymn number seven. secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, 
is the light of the world. Grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands, pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away, and he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, for, and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the, womb of, in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God had my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes and they, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. psalm appointed for this morning, Psalm 40, verses 1 through 12, is found in the order of worship. We'll recite the psalm in unison. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stooped to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a high cliff and made my footing sure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are they who trust in the Lord. They do not resort to evil spirits or turn to false gods. Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great your wonders in your plans for us. There is none who can be compared with you. Oh, that I would make and count them all. But they are more than I can count. In sacrifice and offering you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. And so I said, Behold, I come. In the roll of the book it is written concerning me. I love to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is deep in my heart. I proclaimed righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips, and that, O Lord, you know. 
Your righteousness have I not hidden in my heart. I have spoken in faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. Let your love and faithfulness keep me safe forever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Paul called to, Paul called to be an apostle of the Christ Jesus will be by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes to the church of God that is in Corneth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every word that you have been encircled in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called to be into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with the water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? 
they said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which, mean, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. One of my favorite cinematic prophets is Yoda, because Yoda and I kind of run in the same circle when it comes to the way things process in our brain. And yet Yoda has a phrase which I don't really appreciate, although I think it's funny. And it goes something like, do or do not, there is no try. And this, of course, happens when Luke is trying to raise the speeder out of the swamp and Luke looks at him and says I'm trying I'm trying and Yoda says either do it or you don't do it don't try and yet to me there's something to be learned or something to be said about trying things trying to be or to understand or to learn recently I was having a conversation with an educator and somebody who works in industry who might do some education with newcomers and things like that. And we were talking about essentially the comparison between rote learning or rote education and conceptual learning. And I remember in my day, my day I learned a lot of things not by rote, but because I learned the concept of how things worked in, in series or in, in ways that weren't just linear. I know what the outcome looks like over here, and so if I know what it looks like on this side, I can kind of figure out some way to get from here to here. And maybe not, but we'll try something and it'll get right, or we'll say, no, that one doesn't work, we'll try something different the next time. And I learned a lot about that. We were talking in this group, and I said, those classes I took past fail, I learned more than those things that I took for a grade. Because I, want, I didn't care about learning how to regurgitate information. I was learning how to be present in the information that was presented to me. And I think there's something to be said about trying new things, about figuring out how things work in society or in a system, and how things work in our church and how things work in our faith is important to us, I hope. Last week we talked about the servant whom Isaiah spoke about last week, and Isaiah and Paul kind of in the same way talk about today. Last week, we explored who the different writers were speaking about. At least from Isaiah's perspective, we can reasonably assume that he was not thinking about Jesus of Nazareth. 
Isaiah was probably thinking about a person who would help restore Israel to their place in God's kingdom. And that is arguable that Isaiah may be, in fact, thinking about himself. Or people attribute Isaiah because, attribute the servant to Isaiah because Isaiah is God's prophet. But I think we decided last week that more likely Isaiah was thinking about the people of Israel, not specific individuals, but those people who were set aside and commissioned to bear God's message in the world. A people with diverse talents and functions that work together in a well-working and well-oiled society most of the time. A people who were specifically chosen to be faithful in sharing their experience of God in their time and in their way. As we continue our journey and as we carry forward the lamp which was given to us by those people in Israel and Jesus, we are reminded that we are cho- people chosen by God and there is consequence for us gi- just like there was for Israel. They were called to be God's witnesses to society, to society. And they believed that their election meant that they were undefeatable in a way. But as we've heard and as we remember the reality of existence, their existence said otherwise. When they forgot their part of God's story and their requirement to tell God's story and relate God's promises to God's people and to all society, they got left to their own devices. Isaiah relates God's reality and response to Israel's claim. And we hear it today. Israel says, I have spent my power and I have failed to do the things that I was called to do. All the work that I have done for you, God, has been, that I have attempted, has been for naught. And I have nothing to show for my faith. And yet God responds to them in the reading from Isaiah, I have chosen you as individuals and as a people in you and your faith in me, I, God will receive the glory that I am supposed to receive. And when you focus on God's desires or God speaking to them, my desires, nothing fails. But most importantly, God reminds Israel, the work that you do, which I have given to you, is never too much. The work that God gives us to do is never too much for us. Because God knows exactly how we are made and what we are capable of doing. Israel failed to remember their goal as God's chosen people to reflect God's glory and God's grace in the world and to work with God to achieve God's plan and to remind people and themselves that God is faithful. The truth Israel in their time and Paul and and Jesus relate in his time, in their time, is simple. Come and see what God has to offer to us and to others. God provides everything people need to succeed for God. And that in community, our perceived gaps in what we have or what skills we have are closed and removed. But most importantly, in God, there is no failure. Our faithfulness to where we feel called by God is the reward that we get in the world. The call is not to use the power that we perceive we have in the ways that we think are best but to apply God's power that God gave to us in ways which focus our energy and our efforts on God. The aim we should have is not simply to be perfect in doing God's work or to be perfect in what we do in the world, striving for the perfection that the world demands from us. 
We are reminded today and always that our perfection is demonstrated through our faith. And that we need to remember that God equips equips us to do what we need to do. Nothing more and nothing less. But the job that we have in our world today is to find others to work with us and to help us see that we really do lack nothing. Paul's reminder to us through the Corinthian church is that the work does not come from the church, that's this institution. The work that God wants for us to do in the world is supported by people who are faithful, both in our church, in other churches, in other parts of the community, even in places where people don't realize they're doing God's work. Paul reminds us that the things the faithful can give to their society outside the institution where we are include hope and encouragement in times of despair. And we know this is true because we have lived a life which has never, has not always been sunshine and daisy. We have lived a life where we've struggled and tried to do things which we feel called to do and think, my gosh, we failed at what we wanted to do. We offer assurance or reassurance both inside and outside our church that what is needed, not what we want, but what we need is present in ourselves and in the others that find their way into our world. And that as we help others find meaning in their life and meaningful work, we find meaning in our lives. And meaningful work is God's people in the world, which in turn brings meaning to us as individuals and us as the church, the place where God's faith is demonstrated time and time again. The work that we are called to do in the world is to build God's kingdom. And as we work together across the boundaries, those who we see and meet in the world will see what God has to offer to everyone. It's not simply to bring people to this place. It's to bring an awareness of God to the world that is around us. To keep pushing, to look for God and to look for those people who aren't exactly like us or not in this place who God wants us to reach out to. And who are those people? Well, I can't tell you who it is for you, but I know that God is calling us to do things that are maybe uncomfortable for us because those are the places where we grow. The message I think that we need to hear today is that we have an integral part to play and relating God's story in our world. And that's God's story. And our part in God's story, not the story that we have, except as it reflects God. And that no matter how ill-equipped we feel to tell God's story, the story we are called to tell is not too much for us. We know God in ways that only we know God. And we share God from the experiences that we have. And those are right because that's how we perceive God. We are called to share the perfect story, which is the story of God at work in and through real people like you and like me. Like Luke in those days, do or do not It doesn't have to be anything complicated or high theology. It just has to be relatable to us and to others. And we need to remember and trust that the story we tell will succeed in telling God's story. And that story will never fail. Our part in God's story is simply this. God's work is to save people from the things that separate them from God. And our part in that work is to share the truth and gather others into God's truth and to empower others to share and to gather in ways which God empowers them to do. 
We are reminded, especially today, that if we feel a delay or if we feel like something isn't working or it feels like a failure in trying to do the work that God has given to us, things to remember that that is not a failure. It is simply the assurance that our work is not complete. If it feels like we can't do the right thing, it means that we're not done. And when we are done, we will know. Because God will call us and restore us and bring us to that place where we will live forever in God's kingdom, today and forever. Amen. Amen. We stand as you are able, and turning to page seven in the order of worship, let us recite the Nicene Creed, our ancient confession of faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 6. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all the people in their daily life and work, for, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For, for the, the victims, victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. 
for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For our, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Susan, our bishop, Les, our priest, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and God's, God's church. church. Remembering especially those impacted by war <coughs> and conflict in Ukraine and Russia, and for relief of discord around the world, and those on our prayer list for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For birthdays. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially Vicki Ann, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Greet one another in the peace of Christ. Ascribe to the Lord the honor of his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
giving Eucharistic prayer B on page 10 in your order of worship. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is his right, right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. John and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Our post-communion prayer is found on page 11 in your order of worship. Let us pray. <coughs> Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. 
send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. Our closing hymn is in number 551. <laughs> Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. <laughs>